Hamelin Pool is a great place to observe and to learn something about the processes that lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks. These stromatolites, for example, I call those a biogenic sediment. Bio for biology and genic as related to the word genesis or beginning. So sediments formed by biological processes we refer to as biogenic sediments. In the case of the stromatolites, the biogenic process is production of sticky material, a sticky substance by microbes that helps to trap and bind the sedimentary particles. Basically like a fly on flypaper, the sticky stuff traps the sediment and basically assists the microbe to build the mound. Classic biogenic process. I'm standing on this Uwad sand. I think the Uwad sand is formed by a similar kind of biogenic process. If we do a DNA analysis of this sand, we can find a lot of DNA, a, a, an un unexpectedly large amount of DNA. The DNA isn't from people, of course. The DNA, as far as we can see, is exclusively from bacteria. Not only that, if I take these ooids and I get that DNA and sequence it, I get some ooids from the Bahamas, isolate the DNA and sequence that. Those types of DNA are almost identical. So that doesn't say that microbes in the Bahamas are making these ooids, but what it says is the process by which the ooid is forming in the Bahamas here in, in Western Australia is a very similar process because we've got the same kinds of bacteria living on the sand. And we think again they make sticky substance, but not only that, we think that the microbes by what they're doing through photosynthesis and by other bacteria eating that food, they're actually helping to precipitate the calcium carbonate. So I would call this a biogenic sediment. I have colleagues who disagree with me very strongly about this. They would say that these ooids are forming simply because the water is evaporating, the ooids are being rolled around in the waves here, they form circularly as a consequence of evaporation and crystallization of calcium carbonate, a purely chemical process that involves no biology. So we'd call that a chemical sediment. There are different kinds of sediments, for example, clastic sediments, where material is weathered or eroded as small grains from much older rocks and somehow transported either by wind or by water to a place where it resettles, re-cements and forms a new sedimentary rock. So we can divide sedimentary rocks into rocks that are formed from particles eroded from old rocks, clay, sand, other kinds of grains. We call those clastic rocks. Here where all the grains are calcium carbonate, we call those carbonate rocks. They're very, very different. In fact, we find carbonate rocks are very, very useful, for example, for building stones. So look at the wonderful buildings in ancient Greece and Rome, almost all made from carbonate rock, rock often that's been heated to recrystallize in the form of marble. So the marble that you have in your bathroom is a carbonate rock. Carbonate rocks form very easily in tropical environments. 
they form very mostly close to the equator where it's quite hot and a lot of seawater evaporation down to areas like this which are close to the tropics so this is very close to the tropic of Cap uh, capricorn it's just a couple of hundred kilometers to the north of us so carbonate rocks tend to form in tropical environments in high latitude rocks rocks that are close to the form close to the poles most of the material are grains that have eroded from old rocks that's what we call clastic dominated systems.